Big bazooka has been a term used to describe some central bank actions over the past two weeks. With the Fed buying $622 billion in Treasury and MBS, a staggering 2.9% of US GDP, in just the past five days. But an even bigger bazooka, helicopter money, is the last resort few central bankers seem willing to countenance currently. This ongoing economic crisis will also accelerate the collapse of the dollar as the world's leading reserve currency. The Fed just fired the biggest bazooka ever and is buying everything in sight, and Powell is already calling for more. It seems scared of something. 30 to 50 percent of the economy is shut down now. There is no way the Fed or Treasury or Congress can fill that gap in the dollar system. We are screwed. The Fed money machine will last only until people lose faith in the dollar. It can happen much faster than you think. And the dollar's days are more numbered now than ever. It will fall when the monetary system blows up and resets, because the dollar keeps soaring. The trend away from the dollar was already underway before the latest crisis, led by China and Russia. Now that trend will greatly accelerate as the world seeks to eliminate, or greatly reduce, its dependence on the dollar. The dollar surge will renew calls for a shift from a dollar-centric global financial system. Powell just said he has unlimited ammunition. But there is a catch, the country abdicated its responsibility to its citizens by granting a monopoly to Powell and his ilk to issue our currency, with interest on any loan. Helicopter money becomes submarine debt. Load the aft torpedo tubes, flush. It's a transfer from middle classes to establishment, government elites. The Fed's problem is not only that they are caught in an economic liquidity trap, where monetary policy has become ineffective in stimulating economic growth, but are also captive to a market liquidity trap. The system the bastards control isn't sustainable and requires resets, both big and small. This is the biggest one, cycles going into phase with other cycles. It will include the currency. They will fight forever to control the next one, but they won't, at least not for this generation. They will be thrown from power and dead. Then their remnants will hide in the shadows trying to fifth column everybody for whatever means of exchange pop up. It's what they do. It is not the world that is facing a liquidity crisis. It is the global fiat Ponzi that is facing a liquidity crisis. It's a house of cards looking for more cards to support it from the winds of reality. As the US dollar strength is measured in relation to other major countries' currency and those countries' currencies are on the way down the toilet, it is just a matter of time before the US comes and joins them in the sewer, and everything will be evens, Stevens. When you pay interest, it is also creating currency out of thin air as well. Interest is a scam in itself. The dollar and any fiat currency is a Ponzi scheme waiting to implode. The wealthy families own gold and silver. They're safe. It's the plebs who've been told to keep all their currency in savings accounts who are doomed by our encroaching hyperinflation invasion. Fed printed 29 to 36 trillion that we know of, not counting the trillions of 2020 so far. 60% of global reserve assets, 80% of global payments, and almost 100% of global oil sales. But who's counting trillions these days? It's the quadrillions that really matters. We finally get to the point, printing money to hand over to the government in order to pay its bills. They're talking about to avoid the stigma. I'm talking about people going without food and shelter. Details of the Senate stimulus relief deal includes $250 billion for direct cash relief payments, $250 billion in unemployment insurance, $500 billion for distressed companies, $367 billion for small businesses, $130 billion for hospitals, and $150 billion for state and local governments. That still leaves $353 billion unaccounted for. If the average American pulled a theft like this, we would be thrown in jail. How much longer are we going to bend over America? Republicans and Democrats finally stopped squabbling long enough to spend an estimated $2 trillion on what they claim as emergency corona relief. This $2 trillion bill, is more debt to sink our country. Notice to all debtors, until you get your own printer like the government. Hold all rent, mortgage, bank loan, credit card, debit card payments. Once your printer is installed, please proceed to make your payments on time. The middle class is like a horse that has been worked to death and underfed. Neglected and abused, now it is collapsing and dying. This thing that Wall Street calls a dollar shortage, is a bank reserve shortage. 
That's what it is. Some banks have used up all their reserves to pay outgoing payments, and there is not an equal amount of incoming payments. Reserves are the currency of interbank payment settlement. When all the payments are going in one direction, then some banks will run out of reserves. To get payments coming in again, such banks will have to increase the interest rate they pay on deposits. Do it. It is very simple. There also is not a dollar funding shortage, which is the other misnomer that Wall Streety bankers use. It is a bank reserve shortage, same thing. Reserve currency status usually lasts about 100 years. The petrodollar certainly had a good ride last 100 years. At some point people just stop accepting them for goods, like oil, gold, food, houses, etc. The dollar is going to go bye-bye. The debt must not only replace debt being paid off, but it must also expand, or everything implodes. This is the end of the fiat system. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. Please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there, too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. Toil and trouble. China virus bubble will trump everything. The Fed will inflate, and we will create the everything squared bubble. The Fed will try to blow yet another asset bubble. It will fail. What comes next, I really don't know. Since the Fed is driven by stupid, they will not use the current crisis to deflate the bubble and reduce the expectations of the 1%. They will not raise rates, soon after the Chinese cold crisis begins to dissipate. They will continue to ignore interest income as a source of economic expansion. They will emulate Japan while trying to fix the couple of things the Japanese got wrong, as the Fed sees it. They got the support of liquidity for Main Street right during the current crisis. Probably angering the leftover globalists who wanted massive attempts at asset pumping while Main Street was ignored and smitten by current events. Rather than learn from this triumph and past mistakes, they will likely come to believe that all forms of newly added liquidity are the solution to all that ails, along with the negative rates they did not have to declare explicitly. Conclusion, continued dystopia, of which we are only about one month into at this time. Worse to come. But the financial markets will bubble as best they can. The intellectually crippled Fed will support bubbles over reality because they are both stupid and cowardly. Of course, the Fed is trying to blow another bubble to fix the bubble that just popped, because the alternative is writing off 95% of all debts and starting over. Bigger than Zimbabwe and Venezuela combined, we always go big. Either way, it'll be a bumpy ride. 3 million Americans filed for unemployment. Yet the stock market is over 1k up. This shows that the market is completely separated from reality. The Fed pump N dumps sure work miracles, don't they? None of us should be surprised to see the uber rich are going to steal it all again. Consumer spending forms 70% of the GDP. Is your family out to the malls and stores buying today? The only reason stocks are way up is due to the Fed, central bankers, hedge funds that are mandated to rebalance buying up Boeing and other big caps. Common sense tells you that if the consumer isn't buying and this buying makes up 70% of GDP, this market will go back down once this new trillions bailout money is used up to prop up the market. It's a dead cat bounce. They can prop up the corpse of the economy all they want, but at some point, it will simply decompose. When an engine has overheated, you can pour in all the new oil you want. It's toast. They are trying to keep the quadrillion dollar derivative Ponzi from collapsing. They are also trying to keep a prop under the real estate markets. This is going to be a total failure, and they know it. This must just be their way to buy some more time, but for what? Nothing, I mean nothing could rattle my cage at this point I'm just sitting here waiting because I know whatever it is will soon be coming. The Fed is public enemy number one. Why have a market at this point? When bad companies fail, they should be allowed to die. The alternative is financially undead nationalized zombie companies, and we know how efficient and effective state-run enterprises are. As for securing everyone's retirement, that can all be sacrificed as long as the investments of the 1% are secured. In the end, we're living in illusions. The illusion of free markets, the illusion of democracy, the illusion of choice, and free will. This is the whole idea of collapsing the economy and mass losses of jobs and businesses, so the people become reliant on government help, which in real effect is our own help. 
seeing it is the people that are paying for it all. So when they swing their mass changes, no one will question the government and just cop it up the ass. Just remember that as of today, under the new Fed rules, a bank may hold zero in reserve. Your money is literally not there not a single cent of it. Good luck getting anything out in the near future. Central banking is theft, fraud, and slavery. Maybe all that toilet paper hoarding wasn't such a bad idea after all. By the time the Fed gets done screwing us, the toilet paper will be an exchange-traded commodity. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there, too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a small donation. Thank you.